So now that you have a pretty good idea on what a good a good controller looks like I want to go into what a bad controller looks like because one of the common things I see when I take over a legacy rails application is a poorly formed set of controllers because you may notice that because the controller has a direct communication line with the view that it would be pretty easy uh, to just put all of your code and all the logic for your application here inside the controller. The problem with that is these can get really messy. I brought in the code for a really messy controller that had to be refactored uh, for a different project and you can see right here uh, this one's called the agendas controller and if you go down the line, you have all of these different methods. So you have all of these things that uh, you may notice are not CRUD methods, which is fine. You can put different name methods inside the controller, but look how big this controller is. I'm scrolling all the way down. This controller is way, way out of hand. And if you can imagine, uh, when I came on to this particular project and started to have to work on it, I barely even knew where to start because this controller was so messy and code was all over the place and it, was, it just made it really difficult to know, okay, which one of these things are getting called inside of the view and uh, which ones are connected to background tasks. I mean, it, it just really was a mess and it took months to clean the entire project up. And so that's a big reason why uh, there's a, a common idiom in Rails where you say that you want to have skinny controllers and you want to have fat models. So if you go into the model file right here, if pretend that this agendas controller is our projects controller, the project controller, or I'm sorry, the project model file here would be where you'd want to put a lot of these different methods. And a lot of these methods really should have their own class. Uh, to be honest with you, they should have their own class because uh, the the way that you typically want to do Ruby code is you only want to have one class do one thing. So for projects controller right here, the, it may have some different things that it does such as showing and editing and doing things like that, but really at its core this projects controller only has one goal, which is to set up data flow between the view and the model for the projects uh, for the projects feature of the site. Whereas if you come back to this messy controller right here, you can see you don't really even know. I mean, I can pretty much tell you even just by looking at it, not even knowing everything that this file is supposed to do, that this is doing much more than what the view needs, which is really what you should be sending, the information you should be sending from the controller to the view. So you could probably kill, my guess would be about 90% of this code, move it into the model file, and that would be everything that you would need, and it would give a lot cleaner interface, it would help out developers when they come on, and it would be a lot better practice for how you set up your controller files. So just keep that in mind as you're building out your applications. If you're starting to put a ton of code inside of your controller, really start trying to move those items from the controller into the model file.